Alrighty, folks, it's uh, T Biz End. Overlord Productions here. And uh, we're going to do Fantastic. a. What? Fantastic. Yeah, we're going to do a story time with uh, T Biz and Overlord. We haven't done this in a while. It's been a while, huh? It's been a while since we read a book made for toddlers. <laughs> All right, this is uh, volume 10 of the Sesame Street Library um, with Jim Henson's Muppets featuring the letter T and the number 10. I found this at a thrift store, like a junk shop recently when I went to go visit uh, AKA SheBiz, a uh, good buddy Nicole, on her uh, 45th birthday. And um, and I had to get it because, first of all, her, her birthday is on the 10th, my birthday is on the 10th. And... It's got the letter T on it, like T Biz, T, my last name. And also, yeah, it's just, I had to get it. And then got the little bug, the little Muppet bug down here. You got Grover running across a field, basically. He's sweating and looking down. There's a little Muppet bug with a iced tea, 10 cents a glass. So it's all letter 10, volume 10. Um, yeah, Children's Television Thank Workshop, you. Funk and Wagnalls, Inc. So yeah, let's go ahead and read this because um, I feel like some of this stuff wouldn't um, fly nowadays or whatever. <laughs> that's in this book <laughs> all right and we start off with the first story is uh what is that anyways uh the terrible t the terrible tickler <laughs> um okay uh, that's my purse i don't know you <laughs> all right and then we got the terrible tickler uh cruising into town all right the whole town of tombstone remembers the day that the terrible tickler came riding their way he came down the street with a look keen and steady, and said, Folks, my tickling finger is ready. Now tickling's terrific, and tickling is fun, and you'll all be tickled before I'm done. For tickling is my pleasure, my greatest of joys. I think I'll start off with the young girls and boys. And so the letter of the day, kids, is R. <laughs> <laughs> he first tickled Teddy, then Mike, Fran, and Sue. Then Manuel and Mary, and Algernon, too. Not one could escape, <laughs> though they'd run and they'd wriggle. Each one would get tickled and fall down and giggle. And soon not a boy or a girl could be found except those who lay laughing down on the ground. And then you got the terrible tickler tickling all these Muppet kids hey, and stuff. Kids, would you like to get tickled? Maybe <laughs> Oh my God! Go away, Herman the pervert. Anyways, <laughs> all, right. all right, here we go. All right, I've got all the kids. Now it's time for the others. The tickler announced. Next come fathers and mothers. <laughs> oh God! All right, and uh, hey, mother, and so mother, you, so you, so you, so you got more Muppets getting tickled, more older Muppets. All right, here we go. Age appropriate Muppets. Anyways, Age so so. Then we got the, this fat lady one gasping with the blonde hair. That's hilarious. Anyways, all right, here we go. So the terrible tickler went on with his work. He got Nina the plumber and Charlie the clerk. He got Sam the barber and even the mayor who fell laughing and giggling right out of his chair. And as sure as five pennies add up to one nickel, there wasn't one grown up that he didn't tickle. I've tickled the people, but still I'm not through said the terrible tickler now guess what i'll do all right next page let's see well the letter of the day is m <laughs> well he tickled the horses and he tickled the cows he tickled the cats till they giggled meows maybe he, i should have said b for bestiality <laughs> he tickled the pigs and the mules and the dogs and he tickled the chickens and even the frogs then then he looked all around and said, I'm in a pickle, I'm done, and there's nobody left here to tickle. I've tickled them all now, he said with a frown. I guess I'll have to go and find a new town. <laughs> so he tickled the doll. So he tickled the doll sitting high on a shelf. And then he rode out of town as he tickled himself. <laughs> And everyone said with a giggle and sigh, that terrible tickler's a mean, rotten guy. And they heard him call back as he giggled with glee. Remember, that tickle begins with a T. The letter of the day is P. <laughs> oh, my God. This is hilarious. There's Bert right there as a cowboy. That's hilarious. 
I don't know. This is this is this, this see this this this, um, this story would have. Fl- remember the South Park episode that turned into Children of the Corn because they said the adults amped them a lot. That's what kind of vibe I'm getting from this book right now. It's crazy. Anyways, the, the page after this is Monster Cookies. You just uh, it's basically like a cookie recipe, and it's all featuring the number ten. Like I guess you're gonna cook make uh, cookies. Oh, for the sweat. Ears from young children. <laughs> then, then the next page after that, you count. Let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, well, actually, ten elephants with the count. Then after this, we got another story we're going to read. This is a uh, Little Red Riding Hood. All right, Little Red Riding Hood was taking a basket of food to her grandmother when a wolf walked up to her. "Where are you going, pretty little girl?" asked the wolf sweetly. Red Riding Hood knew she was not supposed to speak to strangers, but she did anyway. I'm going to see my grandma, she said. She lives over there in the woods. How nice, said the wolf, and he ran straight to the grandmother's house and locked the old lady in the closet. When Red Riding Hood arrived, the wolf was in the grandmother's bed, dressed up in her nightgown and cap. Little Little Red Riding Hood said, why, grandma, what big ears you have. The better to hear you with, my dear, said the wolf. Grandma, what big teeth do you have? Um, the better the better to eat you with, cried the wolf, leaping out of the bed. When Red Riding Hood saw who it was, she screamed. Luckily, a woodsman was passing and heard her. He leaned through the window and killed the wolf. Wow, this happens in the in a Muppet Sesame Street book. Anyways, they don't show it, but anyways. Oh, what is it? You haven't seen uh, Muppet's Treasure Island? And uh, oh, I have seen it, but yeah, and killed the wolf. Little Red Riding Hood thanked him, and together they let the grandmother out of the closet. After that, Red Riding Hood never uh, spoke to a strangers again, which makes sense. But okay, we got Red Riding Hood, and then we have uh, the molester guy, the tickling, uh, ter- the terrible tickler, or whatever. Who'd have thought the Sesame Street uh, freaking prison? Full of hardcore Batman level thugs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and see, like the next uh, thing is uh, well, the next one features Victor Zaz. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, and the next page is Bert's Ten Collections. It's just counting like uh, different things. Yeah, I guess you got to add things up to ten, maybe or something like that. Ten collections. And ten the, DC multiverse. <laughs> then the Count's birthday party. Greetings. Oh, what? Uh, what? It's all greetings. It is I, the Count, Bert and Ernie have brought me a birthday present. It is a lovely one and a beautiful two. Let's see. Here are my presents from Sherlock, Grover, and Betty Lou. Just what I always wanted. A three, a four, and a five. Look, look. Present from Roosevelt uh, and his mother. And from Herbert, six, seven, and eight. And from Cookie Monster and Granny, and from Granny Fanny. Uh, <laughs> nine and ten. It's wonderful, wonderful. Now it's time for the party, but first let us count. Let's see the guests. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now let us count the presents. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And let us count the candles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's it. <laughs> Stops there. All right. Here's another story we got. We got the King of Cauliflower. Um, uh, let's see the King of Cauliflower's castle. Once upon a time in the kingdom of Cauliflower, there was a king. The king lived in a very nice castle, but the king was not satisfied. I'm not satisfied. This castle isn't isn't big enough. I want a bigger castle. I want it big, big. I want it all. Call the royal carpenter. Royal carpenter, royal carpenter. I wonder what he wants now. Wheels for his throne or something? I want you to build me a bigger castle. Make it big. Big, big, the biggest. Get the royal bricklayer and get the royal plumber and get the royal painter and get to work. I want it finished by Thursday. Always in a hurry. Tickly tickler, man. (laughs) Okay, the carpenter says, always in a hurry. Never pays you. Neither just, neither. Just pokes you with his sword and says you're a knight or a duke or something. Soon the royal... (laughs) That's kind of ragging on. Uh, it's it's kind of ragging on. It's kind of ragging on kings and stuff like that. Um, 
or uh, was it monarchies or whatever? Anyways, uh, so, soon the royal work people were hard at work building the king a bigger castle. Bigger, bigger. As long as, long as they don't go full-blown Dark Ages and go with, like, the religious taboo route, might be safe for this one. I know, right? And the castle grew and grew. Bigger, bigger. There's, it's funny because there's like a Cookie Monster and some of the scaffolding and Grover up top doing some of... Uh, um, kids want the Sesame Street characters to teach you about the horrors of the Crusades. <laughs> <laughs> and grew... Okay. Uh, the castle grew and grew. And grew until it went right up to the edge of the kingdom of Cauliflower. In every direction in the north, it touched the fence between Cauliflower and the land of Rutabaga. In the south, it bumped right into the United States of Spinach. In the west, it cast its shadow on the good people of Broccoli. And in the east, it looked right down on the hills and valleys of Cantaloupe. There, 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 that ought to do it. Biggest doggone castle I ever saw. That's what the carpenter says up top. He's on the, um, I guess, the, the one of the top of the towers. You, and then you look down and see the United States. It's a spinach. It's like high in the sky. Let's see. All right, here we go. But the castle was so big, there was no room outside in the land of cauliflower the whole land of cauliflower was inside the castle and that caused problems the king's cows couldn't find any grass to eat and the cows are all these carpets are terrible yeah fooey they're not even green let's go somewhere where we can find some grass and his highness's hens and his highness's hens and the royal rooster couldn't find any bugs or seeds to eat. Yeah, and there's no soft place to lay our eggs either. Time to get up, cockadoodle. Ah, forget it. I can't see if the sun's up or not anyway. Let's get out of here. Yeah, let's go some Let's go somewhere else. <laughs> and his highness his highness's horse had no place to run around. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I need a big field to run around in. I'm leaving. So what do you think happened next? All right there. All right there, Cook. Now that I have the biggest castle anybody ever saw, I'm going to celebrate with a big glass of milk. Oh, that sounds actually really good. There's no milk, it your majesty. does, because I've been drinking it all day. All right. There's, there's no milk. <laughs> there's no more milk, your majesty. The cows couldn't find... Uh, any grass to eat so they all went to work in the kingdom of rutabaga uh, oh yeah well then fry me an egg but there was no place for the hens to lay any eggs your majesty so they all went to work in the united states of spinach this is terrible a groom saddle my horse and uh groom and saddle my horse and i will ride after them the horse <laughs> the horse went to broccoli your majesty he, he, there was no place for him to run around here. Oh boy, well I guess I'll take a, take a bath. The bathtub didn't leave, did it? But oh dear, his majesty's mackerels and the queen's quackers were in the bathtub because there, there weren't any more lakes and rivers in the cauliflower. And even worse, all the royal staircases were covered with flower pots. So here he is stumbling across, uh, like down the stairs, uh, smashing all the flower pots. Oh, welcome to the next edition of Hoarders, where Bojack Horseman leaves his master to go do Reese's commercials. <laughs> hey, hey, Princess Peony, where, <laughs> what are, what are these flower pots doing all over the royal staircase? Oh, your royal daddiness. <laughs> royal daddiness. Your royal daddiness. I had to bring the flowers inside because we don't have any room outside anymore. That does it. Call the royal carpenter. Royal carpenter, royal carpenter. This castle is too big. I don't think I heard heard you right there, king. <laughs> so the king ordered the carpenter to make the castle smaller. Then there would be room outside for the princess, uh, princess Peony's flowers and it's the peonies. Or peonies or whatever. The... Only flowers <laughs> and, the, and the cows and the hens and the horse would come back and then yelled the king can you get the fish out of my bathtub and so the royal work people took took the big new castle apart and put back the old small one and sure enough the cows come back and the chickens come back and the horse came back 
and my back is killing me. Boy, I'm telling you, put put up the castle, take down the castle, make it bigger, make it smaller. That king is really weird. But the king of Cauliflower had learned his very important lesson. Bigger is not always better. But, but you know, maybe that swimming pool could be a little larger. Oh, here we go again. Uh, and then over here on the next page, you got Bert brings you build a better bird feeder. It shows you how to build a bird feeder. And I guess by the end of it, out of a milk carton, and the end of it, you got Big Bird eating out of a big ass milk carton. So that's pretty hilarious. Then the next page after that, it's like a gate folder or whatever, or a double page spread or whatever. You got the count with a bunch of little bats, Muppet bats. Um, actually, a cool picture. That would be a cool poster. And he's just counting 10 bats. Side note there's a video of uh, the count singing his song I count slowly but instead of saying count they replace count with a sensor beat so there's one part in particular where he's all I, I think the candles on the shelf when I'm alone I think myself <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what this next story is I don't even know what the story oh, wait, yeah. there's a guess you've got a big bird you've got I got all kinds of Sherlock Holmes. You got the Grouch. You got Cookie Monster. Isn't the Sherlock Holmes guy called something else? He's, he's called Sherlock, I guess, man. I don't know. He's like the green guy with Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, he's the green guy with the Sherlock Holmes thing I going on. I think he's called something else, but I can't remember his name. It's like Mr. Something, isn't it? Yeah. Let's see. Jack be nimble. Jack be quick. Jack jump over the candlestick. And it's uh, Ernie jumping over Bert. Or He's got a spring coming out of the seat, and he's hopping over Bert with Bert's got a candle. Anyways, uh, I guess we got another story to read. This is, this, is, this is more Muppet Kids. Okay, let's see. The boy, the girl, and the jelly beans. Early one evening, a boy who was crazy about jelly beans was walking down the street feeling very angry. That morning, he had given his jelly beans to a girl he'd met. And that afternoon, he, he had just gotten the jelly beans back when a monster came along and ate them all up. So the boy had lost yeah. his... Lost his jelly beans twice in one day, and just thinking about it made him very mad. Boy, I'm He's mad. Boy loses his jelly beans more than once a day. Oh wait, I'm thinking of his marbles. All right, boy, I'm mad. He said to himself as he walked along. If you lose your jelly beans once, it makes you sad. But if you lose them twice, it makes you mad. Now Does all every guy on Facebook bitching when they lose out on figures. Now all I have to have left is my empty jelly bean bag no wonder i'm mad just then he turned to the corner and there he saw the girl he had given his jelly beans to that morning in front of her was a table with a pile of jelly beans and on it and she was talking very angrily to herself boy i'm mad the girl said i'm so angry i could scream i think i will scream and she did and the boy heard her because it was so loud this is funny. Um, well, just there because it's drawn of these Muppet kids and stuff. Anyways, uh, all right, here we go. He, hey, said the boy, why are you screaming like that? Because I'm mad, she grumped. I'm in a, I'm in a rotten mood. Me too, scowled the boy. And I bet I'm madder than you are. Ha, she snorted. That's what you think. You, you don't know what mad is until you're as mad as I am. Yeah, what are you so mad about? I found these jelly beans. I thought I'd lost them, but I found them right here on, this, on the table. The boy frowned. That's why you're mad? That's nothing to be mad about. I'm, I'm not mad about finding these jelly beans, she shouted. I'm mad because I don't have anything to put them in, so I can't take them home. Why not eat them here, the boy suggested. How how can I? It's almost dinner time. If I eat these jelly beans now, they'll spoil my dinner, so I'll have I'll just have to stay here forever and ever looking at them because I don't have anything to put them in and that's why I'm mad. Fooey <laughs> said the boy, that's nothing. Let me tell you what I'm mad about. I lost my jelly beans twice today. Once to you and once to a monster, and I'll never get them back because the monster ate them. And so all I have is an empty jelly bean bag, and that's why I'm mad. Well, said the girl, that's nothing to be mad about. Oh, she stopped and looked at the boy. You have an empty jelly bean bag? Sure. What's the difference? Does 
wait, what, wait, uh, sure, what, but what's the, what, what difference does, question mark, the boy, the boy, the boy pointed at the table, you, you have jelly beans, question mark, yes, I have, she said sweetly, he smiled, what do you know, I have a bag to put them in, hey, she said, I'm not too mad anymore, neither am I, oh, the, hey, we're really stupid, the girl laughed, <laughs> hey, hey, want to, Come over to my house for dinner? Sure, said the boy, but um, what are you going to have? Jelly beans, of course. Okay, okay. Here, pour your jelly beans into my bag, uh, said the boy, and she did. And so there were jelly beans for everybody. Isn't that a good way to end a story? The end. Oh, hey, I got this awesome mythic legions with no box to put it. Oh, and here we go. We got another uh, double page spread. It's uh, okay. Everybody dig in, and they're all around. It's almost like the Last Supper, but it's all with Muppets. It's uh, you got Big Bird at one end. Oh, it's taboos. We got it. You got you got you got you got Big Bird at one end. You got Grouch by him. Then you got a dude with a top. It's Count with the top hat on, which you rarely see Count with the top hat. I've seen it, but it's not a normal occurrence. Yeah. Then you got like a nerdy little office dude. You got the like the weird looking. Uh, gal with the gray or whatever wig then you got a guy with the orange green muppet guy with orange hair you got sherlock you got the little purple dude that was the, the je- i think he was almost looked like the jelly bean kid but he's not the same you got that yellow bird the little yellow bird and we got a then there's grover then there's the old granny with the blue face the chubby looking granny with the blue face and the mop head then you got a uh, cookie monster and then you got guy sm- me of Mary. Then you got Guy Smiley right in the middle, but you can barely see him. And then there's uh, Cookie Monster. And then Bert. Oh, and then there's a little Muppet Girl looking down. And then there's Bert right by her. So, yeah, you got everybody over there. Ernie, too. Okay. And uh, let's see. We got another story. The next uh, two pages is uh, this is your old friend Grover here explaining two words, far and near. So here I go like a racing car. I say, this anthology is giving the 1981 classic. So here I go like a racing car. I stand way off. We call this far. I run, I run back like a speeding deer. Now I'm close. We call this near. I zoom once more like a shooting star. This is very near. And from where you sit, I am quite far. When I run back from from there to here, and stand beside you, I am near. (laughs) <laughs> Again, I leave you where you are and run like mad till I am far. Gall- I, super <laughs> I, I gallop back till I am near. <laughs> but then I fall down on my ear, gas plop, like he passes out. That's funny. He doesn't have ears. All right. Um, well, now we got a riddle. We got a riddle for you next page. It looks like um, Bert and Ernie at a zoo. They're at a zoo. Or so like outdoor zoo or carnival. All right, what has four four feet, stripes, and eats popcorn in the zoo? Stripes eats popcorn in the zoo. Has four feet. What has four feet, stripes, eats popcorn in the zoo? I want to say a zebra, but that seems too easy. Uh, it's Burton Ernie. All right, anyways, here we go. Okay. No, was that a trick question? We're almost to the end of the book. Okay, let's see. Um, next uh, story. Next. made a fool by a freaking book for the, five-year-olds. I can add that to my resume. The next feature is uh, 10. Grover buys 10 <laughs> balloons, and I like the little fat balloon salesman guy. He looks pretty hilarious. Anyways, oh, boy, look, look uh, 10 balloons. Count them. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten balloons for ten cents. I want to buy. That's a bargain. I want to buy those ten balloons. Here are ten pennies. Count them. The fat dudes will count the pennies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Don't take those ten balloons all at one time. Why not? Fly away. That's why. Oh no! Help! Help! Because he's flying away, and the <laughs> and the fat balloon salesman guy's got his hands up. And uh, yeah, and I guess we're uh, the next page is Big Bird uh, Beak Breakers. Let's see, got one wobbly wombat, two twiddling. Tw- um, let's see. All right, I have a beak beak breaker for every number from one to ten. See if you can say each one three times quickly. All right, uh, three times quickly. 
10 tiny toy tops, 10 tiny toy tops, 10 tiny toy tops. All right. One wobbly wombat, one wobbly wombat, one wobbly wombat. <laughs> well, now t was made a fool by a book made right. viral. All right. Two tweeting twiddle bugs, two tweeting twiddle bugs, two tweeting twiddle bugs. <laughs> All right. Nine nice nose nest, nine nice nose nest, nine nose nest. All right. Three thick thumb thimbles, three thick thumb thimbles, three thick thumb thimbles. <laughs> All right. Eight great grape graters, eight great grape graters, eight great grape graters. <laughs> four fake fairies fall flat, four fake fairies fall flat, four fake fairies fall flat. Uh, severing snicky, snares, oh God. Seven snickering snails, seven snickering cells, snickering snails. <laughs> Uh, I'm doing this bad. I'm doing this all wrong. Okay, six. Uh, six, oh yeah, six is see she sells seashells. <laughs> she sells seashells by the seashore. All right, and then the f number five is funny feather fire fighters. Funny feather firefighters. Funny feather firefighters. Oh my god, that's too much. Okay, here we go at the end. It's uh, Bert and Ernie. It's all hey Bert. This volume was really a lot of fun. Especially that first story about the terrible tickler. Oh, they're breaking the fourth wall. That, that's nothing, Ernie. You'll be tickled even more by the stories in volume 11. Now I gotta find volume 11. Oh my god. Oh, dude. That's hilarious, man. That's how you can get your He Man Reap cap at the end. That's hilarious. And I guess the guy who did this book or the artist is like Jay or Joe Mathau or something. I don't know, because that's the name that pops up on the front and the back but yeah that was our look at um volume 10 of featuring the letter t and the number 10 <laughs> oh my god this is ridiculous if you stayed for all 26 minutes of this or 27 i applaud you all right this has been uh t biz and it's all uh, what is it um a quartet of crazy cuck boys run down to target to cuddle Damn it, I can't think of one with a bunch of seeds. <laughs> yeah, it's just not going to work. All right, we're not cuddling anything at Target. All right, y'all have a good one. Later. No, no figure starts with C. <laughs>